Amen. That's pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Uh, we're in our series, and of course the series is called, it's called uh, Offering and Sacrifice. And we started it last week, and it's not about money, so, so be, be calm. We're talking here, uh, and today what I want to talk about is playing with strange fire. Uh, we're taking a look at offering and sacrifice, but not the offering and the sacrifice that God has done for us. We're not talking here about Jesus and the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, the sacrifice of Father God through Jesus that was made for us. That's not the issue. That's not what we're really emphasizing here. We all know that was a perfect offering. That was a wonderful offering. What we're talking about and trying to get us more aware of is the offering that He expects us to give back to Him, right? There is, it's so important. It's so necessary. It's so, it's so um, uh, necessary to understand the correct ways of doing it. So today what I want to talk about is, a, is, a, is an offering that went awry and then see how many of us, perhaps, if any, are maybe playing with some strange fire. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to read the, the scripture passage to you, and then I'll, uh, I'll talk about it some, and we'll, and we'll expound on it. But anyway, it's in Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 24 through chapters 10, verse 2. So it says this, Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted. Is that okay? Is it okay to shout when God, God does something? They shouted for joy and fell face down. And what is and? And is a conjunction. What does a conjunction do? Now, the reason that I am emphasizing this is because man has put a chapter break right there. We move from chapter 9 to chapter 10 right there, but that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be any kind of a break because it's a conjunction. It's as soon as God did this, this was happening. What I'm about to read you immediately followed what God had just done. God had just come out and consumed that altar, that sacrifice on that altar and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them their censers and put fire thereon and put incense thereon, they're in and thereon, and offered strange fire. Would you say offered strange fire? Say that. <laughs> offered strange fire before the Lord, which He commanded them not. In other words, this isn't a, 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 a thing of ignorance that they're doing here. They knew better. Commanded them not, and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. Wow. Two young men go to make an offering to the Lord and end up dead. What's up with that? They were trying, weren't they? Were they doing something at least? At least they went to church. At least they were there. I mean, couldn't the Lord have just given them a warning? Well, He did, didn't He? He said, as the Lord had commanded them. So what's going on here? What's, what's the deal? Well, the Bible says it's because they offered strange fire. Isn't fire fire? I mean, obviously not, because an offering must not then be an offering. What I want to talk about today, and, and what I want to get to today, is that the Lord is extremely serious about offerings and sacrifice. He's extremely serious, and He's also extremely specific. And He wants us to do it in a way that blesses us. <laughs> you know, this would be a dramatic thing, wouldn't it not be? I mean, I, what I want us to do for a moment, if you will, is put you into that place. I want to get you to imagine being there that day and imagine what had happened. And so what I want to do is I want to rehearse with you the couple of months prior to this and bring us up to this point so that maybe we can get a running start into what's going on here. See, so you were a slave... In Egypt, you were under bondage. Pharaoh and the Egyptians ruled over you and had over your ancestors for 400 years. 
And there you were in Egypt. And all of a sudden, God begins to show up with a mighty hand, the Bible says, and bring plague after plague after plague after plague. And finally, you remember that last plague. That last plague, you remember killing that lamb and taking that blood and putting it on that doorpost and eating that lamb in a specific way. And that you remember that night that the death angel came through Egypt and took out the firstborn of the Egyptians. And you remember the next day, Pharaoh's not just letting you go. He's begging you to get out of there. You remember leave, leaving. You remember loading the family up. You remember loading the van up, man, and you're, you're getting out of there, you know, and, and, and you're following the cloud. And it seems that he's led you to an ambush. It seems that you're going to have an ambush here. But in reality, what God's really done is led the Egyptians to an ambush. And you remember, you're standing there and all of a sudden that Red Sea opens up and there's this wall of water on either side and you get to go across on dry land. And as the Egyptians try to follow you through, that wall of water collapses on them and kills them all. And that cloud leads you every day. And miraculously, you know, it's a cloud by day. When, when it's hot outside, it's like air conditioning. And he's taking care of you and your family so that the sun doesn't get to you. And when it's cold at night, it's a pillar of fire and it keeps your family warm. And every day, miraculously, there's food to eat and something to drink every day, except the Sabbath. Every day this is going on. And you remember coming to Mount Sinai, and there at Mount Sinai, that cloud's on that mountain. And you remember Moses going up, staying gone a long time. But when he came down, his face glowed. He had been with God. And he had something brand new for us to do, something that our people had never done before. We, we were going to have our own priest. We were going to have our own church. We were going to have our own place of worship where God would come and speak to us. And, and this was exciting to us because we've never had this before. So we receive an offering and we, we take up the money and we, and we begin to build the tabernacle. And it's a beautiful thing. It's so pretty and, and it's colorful out here in the middle of, the, of, of nothing. And you remember last week, we ordained Aaron's boys and Aaron. Aaron's boy, Nadab, Abihu, Issachar, and Eleazar. You remember them. Went to school with them, right? You remember them. And, and we ordained them last week and we set them. And their place is going to be a special place because what they were going to do is relay to all the rest of us how to approach God, how to worship God. We don't know. All we've ever done is just kind of play it by ear any way we wanted to. And we watched that ordination happen. This is an exciting thing. And now today, this week, what we're going to get to do is consecrate the tabernacle. We're going to, we're going to get to ordain and, and, and set that tabernacle as the place. And we're so excited because Moses said God's going to show up. And so here we are. We got our, we got our lounge chairs and our beach towels out. And our whole family's here, you know. And, 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 you know, there's mom and dad down there. And here's the kids over here. And we're just so excited. We're watching this a dramatic thing. They're taking these animals and they're Eleazar and, 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 and Nadab and, and Abihu and Iskar. They're, 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 they're killing these animals and they're taking the blood and they're taking it and giving it to Aaron and Aaron sprinkling it on the altar and they're cutting these animals up. But see, that's representative of God forgiving our sins so that we can approach him. And so they take this stuff and they hand it to Aaron up on the altar and he's laying it on the altar and it's burning and we smell it burning. As God deals with sin. It's a dramatic thing. And all of a sudden we hear this boom coming out of the tabernacle and this ball of fire comes out of the tabernacle and just comes on top of the altar and consumes all, all that offering. Whoa. We did what everybody else did. My whole family did what everybody else did. We just shouted for joy and fell on our face. And, and you, know, you know, we were laughing and crying at the same time. We had the goosebumps. You ever had the goosebumps? We had, we had the goosebumps. We were in the presence of God. And I was so happy and joyful because I looked over here and my kids are falling down and they're worshiping God. And I look over there, mom, dad, and all my friends, they're all falling down and worshiping God. Everybody's worshiping God. But what a moment. We are having church. And, that conjunction, and about that time, Nadab and Abihu, I don't know why they did it, they grabbed their censers and put coals and incense and start running around. 
And we hear that noise again. I don't know why they did it. It wasn't in the program. Boom. Another ball of fire comes out, but this time, it doesn't take their offering. It hits them. And there they are, a pile of ashes, right there in front of the tabernacle. We went from this emotion of joy and shouting and rejoicing to dead silence and fear. What happened? What did they do? The Bible says it was strange fire. Strange, wasn't it? Have you ever had something strange to happen in your life? Something just all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, whoo, consumed you. Let me name a few things that I see consume and devour people. Divorce. Debt. Marital situations, marital problems. Children, problems with our children. Job-related problems, illness. All of these things consume us. And maybe, maybe you know somebody who's experiencing something consuming them right now, today. I ask you a question. Could it possibly be related to how you or they do offering and sacrifice? See, we normally wouldn't think that way, would we? We wouldn't think that the way I do offering and sacrifice would relate to something consuming my life. Well, it certainly did with Nadab and Abihu. And I'm persuaded that it has a lot to do with every single one of us. That the way we do offering and sacrifice, and you'll see why in just a second, so relates to what goes on in our lives and in the direction in which our lives go. Probably no passage in the entire book of Leviticus is preached about or talked about as much as this particular passage. I... Uh, Every week before I come and stand before you and try to bring the Word of the Lord, I try to prepare myself spiritually, but also mentally. And I do a lot of homework and research, and I got my Bible programs and my commentaries, and, and now I, I can Google it. You with me? <laughs> now I can Google it. And so I Googled it. I typed in strange fire, and it was amazing what came back. You know... You get anything that you can imagine back as what strange fire is to any specific person. Uh, and usually it's a preacher or somebody or a commentary or something that's sharing with you what they don't like. And that's strange fire. That's what they say it is. And for example, one guy said it was rock and roll. That's what it is. It's rock and roll music. And now we're, what we're doing is we're bringing that rock and roll music into the church. And that's the strange fire. One article said it was the charismatic movement. That's what it is, those tongues. That's what it is. It's all that stuff, that running and hollering and shouting and all that. That's, that's, that's what it is. Another article said it was uh, the screens and all this fancy stuff we're doing now, the projectors and the, and the bongos and the drums and the guitars and the keyboards. That's what it is. <laughs> because, and, they, and, the, and the article went on to say, said that, uh, said that we need to be specific and, be, and verify all the ways that we worship the Lord according to the Bible, which, of course, as everybody knows, is hymnals, right? <laughs> I think the reason that we get so many ideas as to what the strange fire was 
is because Moses wasn't specific about it. Moses authored the book of Leviticus, and he didn't develop that. He just said they got, they, they, took the, we knew it had to do with incense and coals, and it was strange fire. We knew it had to do with that, but he didn't develop exactly what they did. Now, I, I think that's intentional. I don't, I don't think that Moses wanted us to know, neither did I do I think God wanted us to know specifically. Because then we would avoid that and miss the real point of about strange fire. So, Delbert, you're so smart, then you tell us. I am. And it's not what I think, it's what the Bible says. Okay? That's right there. So, in Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 3, it says this. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what? This is the deal. This is what just happened. This is what is meant by this. This is what the Lord spoke of when he said. And this is the next verse. This is right after they fried. The next verse says this. This is what the Lord spoke of when he said, Among those who approach me, I will show myself holy. Would you say holy? Holy. holy. What does holy mean to you? Holy means without a dot of sin. Holy means you can't sin. Holy means high and lifted up. Holy means, holy means perfect. Holy means nothing greater, nothing better than. I will show myself holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. Say honored. Honored. And then it says, and Aaron remained silent. You say, well, you got to realize what Aaron just saw. But what Aaron just witnessed was not somebody coming to him like Job had and telling him that his boys just got burned up and died in a fire. Aaron saw what happened. Aaron saw his two oldest children consumed by fire. And Aaron held, Aaron was silent. And what that's saying is that Aaron is saying, you're right, Moses. You're exactly right. That's exactly what happened. You see, Nadab and Abihu, the way they did their offering, did not show the Lord as holy. Nadab and Abihu did not honor the Lord with their offering and sacrifice. When you think about it, and you see, when we bring our offering or our sacrifice, and again, we're not talking about just money. We bring our offering and our sacrifice to the Lord. It must show Him holy. It must honor Him. If it brings Him down to common, if it brings Him low, if it's not the best we can do, if it doesn't give Him the honor, then it is strange fire. When you think about it, you slice it and dice it. Your offering and sacrifice literally will show how you feel about God. It shows the Lord is holy and that you honor Him. Or it shows that you're playing church, which is playing with strange fire. Uh, you know, we may never know exactly what it was that Nadab and Abihu really did, but we do know this. It did not show the Lord as holy, and it did not honor Him. See, through their offering, I want you to hear this, through their offering and sacrifice, they made God common. Through their offering and sacrifice, they did not honor him, they dishonored him. Through your offering and your sacrifice, you are telling God how you feel about him. So I ask you, how is your offering and sacrifice? You know, 
I think what we all need to admit is that for many people, their offering and sacrifice does not show God as holy, does not show Him as perfect, does not bring Him honor. And then they wonder why strange things happen in their lives. Nadab and Abihu were priests unto God. God gave them special access to Him. And what they were supposed to do, what their purpose of life was to be, was to go and get the ways of God and then through offering and sacrifice express this to people as to how to worship. That's, that's why they existed, was to communicate to the people how to approach God. That was a priest. But in the new covenant, in our covenant, we don't have priests. Do we? Let me tell you the truth. In the new covenant, you are the priest. You're as much a priest as am I. Let me show you. Now, I'm going to read to you one passage in, in the book of Revelation, but there are three that specifically say this, and you can do the research on it. But in Revelation chapter 1 and verses 5 through 6, it says this, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest, if the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to your life and you are now been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, of the Son of His love, if that's happened to you, then you are a priest. Our kingdom is a kingdom of priests. And if you're in the kingdom, then you are a priest. This is what Jesus did for us. Has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve His God and Father. To Him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. See, the kingdom of God functions because it's full of priests. And what our purpose in life is to do is to, we have access to God. And so what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go now and to, to, the, and to the people and, and relay to them the way to come to God. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. See, you now have... Bold entrance to God. Through Jesus Christ, you're a priest, and now what you do is you go before the Lord, you, you, you learn the ways of God, the decrees of Him, and then you go back and you begin to minister that to people as ambassadors of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as, through, as though God were making His appeal through us. What God wants us to be now are priests that go before Him, then go back out and make His appeal to people through the ways that they are to come and approach Him, offering and sacrifice. Now, in, now in, in the New Testament, we don't do animals. What do we do? What, what is the offering and the sacrifice that we are expected to give God? You got it. Our own selves. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as what? Living. Living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. See, it's, it's not only your money. And we're so tuned into thinking that when we offer, we're going to receive the offering. And we're trying to break that habit from saying it around here. We're, we're, we're receiving the, the aspect of offering, but that's not the only thing that we're to offer. We're to offer our lives, are we not? We talked last time about this. We talked about there's a sacrifice of praise. Listen, it was difficult for some of you to sacrifice a praise this morning. It was difficult for some of you to get here to church. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It was a sacrifice. It's pretty easy for me. I just get up. Don't even have to comb my hair anymore. I just get up <laughs> and come on to church. But some of you had to fight with the spouse, had to fight with the kids. Car wouldn't crank. Clothes wasn't washed. And it was a real sacrifice for you just to get here. You see what I'm saying? And there's a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice we talked about last time of doing good. It's, it's, it's not easy, is it, Daryl, to turn your cheek when things go crazy and people say things to you? It's It's, it's difficult. Jesus said, but that's how we sacrifice. That's how we worship God today. We turn the cheek. We, it's not easy sometimes to, to, to share. We talked about that. That's a sacrifice. 
But yet, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about our lives. So, here's the point. Does your offering and sacrifice cause people to see the Lord is holy? People are watching you. Nadab and Abihu. Does your offering and sacrifice cause people to see you as see the Lord as holy and that you give him honor? Or do they see you stay in the bed on Sunday mornings? They see you yell and scream and get mad. See you lay out of work. How what are you showing them? And we wonder why things go crazy and consume us in our lives, why we have strange things happening. Our offering and our sacrifice is a picture of how we feel about God. In Leviticus chapter 10, in verse 5, it says something that's very interesting, and I want to mention this to you. So they came and carried them still in their tunics outside the camp as Moses ordered Still in their tunics. Hmm. I want to say something in light of uh, what's happened this past week concerning a popular pastor in the church world. Uh, he's been on the news all week. I ate lunch Wednesday with Ralph Martin. I, I, we go down, we meet once a month or so, and, and I went down and spent lunch with him. And, and as preachers do, we share our revelations, as, and especially in the light of current events. And so I was sharing with Ralph this thought that Judy and I had discussed, and I had shared this particular thought. I said, it's amazing because Nadab and Abihu were consumed and burned up, but yet they carried them away in their tunics as it was in a bag of ashes, their own tunics. And I was sharing this with Ralph. You see, what the tunic is representative of, let me show you this in Exodus twenty-eight forty: make tunics, God said, sashes and headbands, for Aaron's sons to give them dignity and honor. What the tunics were was, was just a display of the priesthood. And so what God did <laughs> was devour the priest, but he did not devour the dignity and the honor of the priesthood. If you were to read the rest of that chapter, you would find out that the tabernacle goes on after Nadab and Abihu are gone. Immediately it does. And so what I'm trying to say to you is that the Lord will deal with his preachers. <laughs> he will take care of his preachers. But at the same time, he saves and continues to build his church. Am I right? It's always been that way and it will always be that way. His church, he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I just wanted to share that with you. The NIV Bible says something that I want to read to you back to, to chapter 10 and verse 1 again. It says, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered unauthorized fire. This is the New International Version, and there the King James Version says, Strange fire, before the Lord, contrary to his command. Say, contrary to his command. Contrary to his command. See, Nadab and Abihu's sin was not a sin of ignorance. It was a sin of presumption. They assumed they could offer what they wanted, any way they wanted, any time they wanted, anywhere they wanted. And they thought they could do this without there being any consequences. The remainder of the chapter shows that it wasn't just a command to Nadab and Abihu. It was a command to anybody that offered offering and sacrifice. All of them heard this same command. It wasn't just a command that God gave Nadab and Abihu. It was a command that he gave all priests, which is are all of us, right? Here's the point. I can't expect to pick up my censer and run around and do my, sense, my incense any way I want to, anywhere I want to, make my offering any time I want to, any place I want to, while you're trying to do it the way the Lord said to do it and expect to get the same blessings on my life that you're going to get on your life. Do you hear that? Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't just do it my way, the way I want to do it, and you're trying to do it right and expect things to go well with me and me not have trouble, me to expect to get the same blessings that you're getting because you're doing it right. That's not a righteous God. That's not how He runs business. 
If your kids don't do what you tell them to do, does it upset you a little bit? But when your kids do what you ask them to do, do you reward them? And it's that way. And, and so many of us just do offering and sacrifice any old way we want to. We pick up our sensor. We go running around, do whatever we want to do, wherever, how much, wherever. And God is so specific about it. And we expect to have a blessed life and wonder why things go crazy. See, the Lord tells us all the same thing. He's told us all how to do it. But we want to make up our own rules. We want to do it our own way. Do our own thing. And we don't understand why life goes crazy. Ask Nadab and Abihu. See, when you have trouble, you, you got to start looking around at things. When we start having trouble in our home or whatever, one of the first things that Judy asked me about is how are our offerings, how are our sacrifices, how are these things going? What are, how are we doing? Are we doing them right? You see, this is exactly what the Scriptures teach us. In Psalm 66, uh, Psalms chapter 66, verse 13 through 20, I want to read this to you. Because what, what's happening here is, David's have, ha, is David is having trouble. And it says here, I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth have spoken when I was in trouble. Now David says, I'm, I, I got trouble, and so what I, make, what I want to make sure is that my offering and my sacrifices are, are the way they should be. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings and the incense, and this is, this is in contradiction and contrast with Nadab and Abihu. This is why I selected this one. With the incense of rams, I will offer bullocks with goats. Salah. I need you to say Salah. Do you have any, any idea what that means? Salah. It means to stop right here and think. Stop right here and think about what I've just said. Stop right here and ponder this thought. What David has just said is that I, when I have trouble, I check out my offerings and my sacrifices. What David says, and then I want you to salah this. I want you to salah how it worked out in my life. He goes on. He says, salah. And then he says, come and hear all ye that fear God. And I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I think it's the NIV version. It says, I want to tell you what he did for me. You, when, when you do it right, you can stand there and say, I, let me tell you what he did for me. And he says, I, he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. And I regarded, if, if, if I regarded iniquity in my heart, the Lord will, would not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to my voice of the prayer, of my prayer. It, what David is saying, God answered my prayer because I did Offering and sacrifices. Are you getting this? He says, my prayer, blessed be God who hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. David got mercy from God. David got his prayers answered from God because he checked out his offerings and sacrifices. You got to check out them. Check them out. Check out them. You got to check them out. See, David knew Salah. There is, there's a connection. Woo! Salah, I got to think about this event. Well, I did this and this happened. Woo, Salah. See, the Lord is extremely serious. How contrary, how different it was with Nadab and Abihu who just ran around doing their incense and their offerings their way and created trouble. See, I think sometimes we create trouble with our offerings the way we do them rather than solving trouble. Mm. The offering in incense brought them, Nadab and Abihu, great trouble. But David's offerings and in incense delivered him from trouble. I'll close with this thought. The Lord does not ask a lot from us. He doesn't. He really doesn't ask a lot. One day, tenth, just be good to people. Uh, you know, he doesn't ask a lot. Share. He doesn't ask a lot. Praise me. But what he does ask us to do, he is extremely serious about it. God's not playing. But so many people play with God. Our offering and our sacrifice of life 
simply as a statement of how you feel about him. Do you think he's holy this high or this high or this high? Your offering and your sacrifice just says how much you honor God. Do you honor him this much or this much or this much? Your offering and your sacrifice express how holy you feel he is and how you respect him. Or your offering and sacrifice is just playing church and doing the church thing. And really you're playing with strange fire. Stand with me. I got a lot of amens on that one, didn't I? Hallelujah, brother. You go, boy. <laughs> you know it's the truth. I want you to ponder. I want you to just allow this. What's going on in your life? Do what David did. Well, what did I say I was going to do? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do I need to be doing? And then watch what God does in your life. And you'll see him get, out of, get you out of this trouble. Father, thank you.